Hi, in today's episode I will present to you an interesting kit of microcontrollers programming microcomputer educational based on the 8051 microcontroller. I built the kit myself using the author's documentation, diagrams and BOM. This set has been presented for the first time in 1997 in one of the professional magazines about electronics. The most of unique feature of this set is programmable microcontroller without external use PC or laptop. He has in the, his memory APROM special program BIOS or monitor which allows entering the machine code from keyboard. The set consists of a main board with the processor, APROM memory, RAM memory, address latch and several ICs for example MAX232 for serial communication. The second element is display board with keyboard. Here are different ICs, which I will describe later. The third element is a 5 voltage power supply set. Unfortunately, my first time with this set isn't successful. After folding, soldering and visual inspection proves that the system doesn't work. I improve soldered connections, I press ICs in sockets. Still nothing. The first suspicious IC I tested APRON 27C64 memory chip. I bought it as programmed, however after checking it in the memory programmer it looked like it was empty. I uploaded 8 kilobyte binary file to another clean one 27 C64 chip. Unfortunately, still nothing. I decided to use a logic analyzer Sali to check what is happening on the data bus line D0 to D7. For the measurements I used the main board itself. I connected the logic analyzer to link connector. I didn't see any reaction to pressing the system reset button. I discovered that after removing from PCB address latch 74HC573 there are no waveforms in the data bus. I found good one of this IC in another didactic set board and replaced to this used board. After this operation the waveforms appeared on the bus. However, after connecting the keyboard still nothing happened on the LED displays. If the system worked, it should offer the word hello. Now I will check whether on data lines T0 to T7 there are some understandable data. I watch and write in a changing order sequences. As you can see, part of the memory the data program read from below is like this alone on data bus lines T0 to T7. It's time to start analyzing the data line after line based on the diagram. Signal address latch enable ALE used to latch address lines A0 to A7. C0 
signal program strobe enabled PCEM used to read external APRO memory read data RD signal used for reading external RAM write data WR signal used for writing in external RAM signals on the most significant bits of address A8 A9 A10 A11 A12 A13 A14 A15 A15 and the younger part of the address frozen in the address latch 74 ACT 573 A0 to A7 Control signals for memorized and logic in this system I will check later Now accurate measurement of signals on data bus D0 signal D1 D2 D3 D4 D5 D6 D7 Described ALE signal PCEM A0 A1 A2 A3 A4 A5 A6 A7 I record all the signals both from data bus and from address bus to see that the program it is actually done correctly. I'm not sure it is. There is no reaction to pressing the keyboard and the display has only one segment and you can see no physically reaction to pressing the reset button. Signals A13 to A15 are used to control of the decoder's output 74 HCT138. I will discuss the operation of this system for a minute. RAM read signal RD again and reading WR. External APRO memory read signals over the data bus are read in the falling slope of the PCN control signal. Address signals are read in the falling slope of ALE signal. I will now fill with binary values all the signals I am interested to build the beginning of program. We'll check then whether the program is performing correctly and the signals are in accordance with the instruction contained in APRO memory. Here you can see what the data is taken and from which addresses. Let's look at the piece of memory content APRO. Another fragment, probably resulting from some jump to address 06B1. All data match for individual addresses. Sometimes the address occurs twice or even three. It is difficult to understand. However, you can see here that the program is working properly and the signals, they correspond to the orders inside the APROM memory. Let's look at the schematic of the mainboard. Microcontroller 
memory and latch, they seem to work properly. It's time to look at the other system's chip, especially the address decoder 74HCT138 seems to be important when it comes to operating display and keyboard tiles. The three most significant address bits A13, A14 and A15 connect the microprocessor to the address decoder. The appropriate address on A, B and C lines encoded on 3 bits activates the coder's outputs. Y2 output controls the display via IO1 signal and Y3 output activates the keyboard with an IO2 signal. Both signals are in the board's connecting connector. Logic 0 levels Activate periphery. The decoder's address inputs remain all the time in the low state. There is something wrong here. At the output of the coder, only the Y0 line is registered in the logical state 0. In this case, the display and keyboard will be not activated forcing the display to turn on by shorting the decoder output to ground manually. The dot on the first display lights up, but the hello word cannot be seen. I pressing reset button to reset the program in memory. When I quickly reset the program, the lights up segments flashing to separately letters inscription Hello. What's wrong? The display control lines are among others IO1 and WR. The K path is controlled by IO2 lines and RD power lines. In simple terms, it works that 74HCT574 IC provides the charter encoding data. Here is a dot on all displays and the decoder 74LS145 activates the given display. Here the number one. Next, the program provides the charter codes H on display number 2, the E letter on the number 3 display, and so on. Along with reading the state of keyboard's case, display control is implemented as multiplexing method. In addition to the control lines discussed before, there is the address signal A0. It completes the input of triple NOR gate. Their outputs are CL key clock signals for 4 bit register 74HCT175 and 8 bit 74 HCT 574 register. So the correct displaying of data appearing correctly on lines D0 to D7 depends on the three control signals. I'm sure the IO1 control line works wrong. This line doesn't take logic zero state during the program operation. That's why the system doesn't work. It is activated by the A13 input signal 
after conversion to the IO1 output signal remains in the logic state 1 and blocks the display board. Earlier I shown you checked digital lines it was due to the fact that the basic voltage and the signals have been also checked. I will show now the result of these measurements. Proper power supply to main board plus 5 volts power for ICs are correct. Ground potential for ICs everywhere is correct too. Properly set jumpers they actually polarize ICs. Possible disturbances in the serial communication I exclude after removing the MAX 232 IC. Strategic address lines A13, A14, A15 have the same values in different places. That's ok. Signals which configuring EEPROM memory they polarize the system's inputs properly. Address signal A0 between mainboard and display board continues and identical. The A0 signal is variable and it should also be the outputs of null gates. The WR signal is also variable. That's good. It is important, however, to get the state's logical zero at the same time for every one line. The IO1 signal in the high state blocks output of the NOR gate. Although the lines A0 and WR are periodically in logical zero, IO1 at this moment remain at logic state 1. The registered U 11A waveform present output signal from our triple NOR gate. When I shorted IO1 signal to ground, mean I enforce a logical zero state, the dot in the first display lights up and nothing happens anymore. The output of the NOR gate is behaving correctly at times when all three input signals assume a logical state 0, the output has logic 1. The system doesn't work. I have no ideas how to solve. So, if you can, please help me. Thanks for watching.